Hello everybody and welcome back to video two in the Slackbot tutorial series. So in this video, we're gonna be talking about events. So how can we actually subscribe to events? Now, what that means is that right now, all we're really able to do is send a message. We can do a few other things as well. We could like pin a message, react to it, but we're not able to see what's happening inside of these channels. We don't know what other people are doing. We can't really see if someone else sends a message. And a lot of the times when we have a bot, what we want to do is be able to do something when a user, you know, runs some command or does something specific in the channel. Maybe they say a swear word and well, we want to delete that message, right? That's an example of something that we could do. So what we need to do is set up a way for our bot to be kind of alerted or be aware when something happens in this channel. Now, this is somewhat complicated in terms of how this actually works for our implementation is not going to be that difficult. But what we need to do is go back to the Slack API page and we need to go here to where it says event subscriptions and start setting up a few things so that we're subscribed to these events. So what I'm going to do is go ahead and turn enable events on. Now, notice that the first thing it asked me for here is a request URL. Now, what this is saying essentially is that when an event occurs, the Slack API is going to send a post request, which is just a method of an HTTP request essentially to our web server. So what we're going to be doing is we're actually going to be running our bot, which we're not doing right now on a web server. Now running on a web server just simply means that this is going to be sitting and it's going to be running 24 seven and it's going to have its own kind of URL, right? Just like a website, you know, if I go to techwithtim.net, that's running on a web server. And when I go there, it returns some HTML and it renders that on my screen. Well, this is going to work a little bit differently. What's going to happen is we're going to be running on a web server. It's not going to be a website, just a web server. And when an event happens, it's going to send a request to that web server. And then we can handle that request and we can do something with it. So for example, when a user sends a message, we can send a message back or we can say hello or something like that. So to do this, uh, we need to start by doing a few different things. The first thing we need to uh, do is install a tool called ngrok. So N-G-R-O-K. The reason for this is that we're going to run our web server on our local computer, at least for right now. When we distribute this bot later on, we will run this on like a public web server that everyone can access. But for right now, we're running it on our local computer. So we need to go ahead and install this software called ngrok, which will essentially allow us to take a public IP address or a public domain and route that to our local web server. So you just need to go ahead and press download here. This is completely free. There is a paid version, but we don't need that. And then if you're on Windows, obviously download for Windows. If you're on Mac and Linux, download for those respective platforms. Now there is some instructions here. Uh, you may have to do a few different things if you're on Linux or Mac OS. Uh, you can check that out right here, but download that and then make sure you keep track of where that file is downloaded because this software works a little bit differently than uh, we may have used before. Anyways, mine is stored inside of my downloads folder. So if I go to downloads, you can see I have ngrok right here. Make sure you unzip that folder and then just take the application file and put it somewhere where you're going to remember. In fact, you could actually put it uh, right inside of here if you wanted to. It's going to be hard for me to run it in this directory, uh, but of course you could put it there if you wanted to. All right, so the next thing we're going to need to do is install a few more packages from pip. So since we're going to be running a web server, we're going to use a module called Flask, which is just a really lightweight uh, micro web service is what it's called to actually run this server. So we're going to say pip install Flask like that. Now, again, you can say I already have this satisfied for you guys. It should install a bunch of different things. And then the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to say pip install and then Slack events API. So I'll leave that up right there and you guys can see what that is. But this is what we're going to use to actually handle and grab the events coming from Slack. So now that we have these two things installed, come on, finish up there. We're going to go ahead and modify some things in our Python file, and then we'll go back to the Slack API page and we'll add a few different things. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to say from Flask import Flask with a capital like that. Then right after we initiate the client or before, it doesn't actually matter where we do it, we can say app equals, and then we're going to say flask, and then underscore, underscore name, underscore, underscore. This is simply just a variable that's inside of Python. It represents the name of the file. Uh, you don't, I don't need to explain why we need that, but this is just how we configure our flask application. Now it's super easy to run our flask application. What we can do is we can set up this if statement at the bottom of our program and say, if underscore, underscore name, underscore, underscore 
equals and then inside of strings underscore underscore main underscore underscore simply we can do app dot run and then we can say debug equals true now what this is going to do is take our flask application it's going to run it on the default port which i believe is port 5000 if you want to change the port that this is running on you can say port equals and then set that to some integer value that's not already being used but what the debug does is say, okay, if we save this file or we modify it, we don't need to rerun the Python script. It will automatically rerun it for us. It will automatically update the web server, which is really nice when we're doing development. And then what this is saying here is essentially, if we didn't import this file, if we actually ran this file directly, that's essentially what this if statement says, then go ahead and run the web server. The reason for that is that if we imported this from another file, we probably don't want to run the web server when we're you know, taking a variable or something like that from this file. All right, so now we have that. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to say from Slack events API, import Slack event adapter. Now, this is kind of a weird thing. It's hard for me to explain exactly what this is going to do, but this is going to handle all of the events for us. So after we make the app and make sure it's after, what we're going to do is say slack underscore event underscore adapter like that is equal to slack event adapter. And then inside of here, what we're going to need to do is pass something, something, and then our app. So I'll uh, talk to you about what these two things are in a second. Actually, we can do the middle thing. We're going to say slash slack slash events. But for this one, we're going to need to pass what's known as a signing secret, which we're going to have to grab from the Slack API website. What this is saying is, OK, we're going to add the Slack event adapter. This event adapter will allow us to handle the different events that are being sent to us from the Slack API. And what we're going to do is say, OK, we want this root right here. So slash Slack slash events to be where we send all of those different events to. And app is saying, OK, what web server are we sending these events to? Well, we're sending it to this app, which is the current running web server. Hopefully that makes sense. But let's go back to the Slack website, uh, Slack API. We're going to go to basic information and scroll down. And there's this thing called our signing secret. Now, what I'm going to do is, well, I'm going to have this blurred out, but I'm going to copy this signing secret. I'm going to go into my .env file. And just like I made this Slack token, I'm going to say signing underscore secret equals, and then I'm going to set it equal to that token that I just grabbed, or that secret that I just grabbed. Now, just like we did previously, what we're going to do is use the os.environ or whatever you want to call this to grab the signing secret from that file. So I'm just going to copy this here and I'm going to paste that as our first argument to the Slack event adapter. So now instead of Slack token, I'm going to say signing, oops, in all capitals, underscore secret like that. So there you go. I saved and you can see now it kind of went down on the next line. We have Slack event adapter, signing secret, the route we want to go to, and then app. All right, now this is where it gets a little bit more complicated, but nothing crazy. So what we're going to do is go ahead and run this. I just want to make sure I didn't mess anything up too badly. I actually think that we are good. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and run this. And notice that now we can see that we have a web server running and we get kind of all of this output. So it says right now that we are running on HTTP colon 127.0.0.1 colon 5000. So that's just localhost, right? But what I want you to keep track of here is this port. This port is important because we're going to need to use this in the next step. So in my case, I'm on 5000. You're probably on 5000 as well. But if you see a different number here, then swap what I do in the next step with that number. So what we're going to do now is go and find where that ngrok program was and just double click it to run it. Now, if you're on Mac or Linux, you're going to have to go back to the ngrok website and kind of follow the instructions for that. It's not very complicated, but you just need to essentially run that program. So I'm going to go and double click ngrok. And then now I'm inside of CMD. What I'm going to do is I'm going to type ngrok in lowercase like that. Also, I have no idea if that's how you pronounce it. So I apologize if I've been butchering this the whole time. You're going to type HTTP. And then you're going to type the number uh, for the port that your server is running on. So in this case, ngrok HTTP 5000. I'm going to go ahead and press enter. And when I do that, you're going to see that we have all of this kind of stuff popping up here. And what I want you to look for is where it says forwarding. So essentially what we've just done by running this program is we've allowed this public IP address, which is this HTTP blah, 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 to point to our local host uh, web server. So we can use this on the internet 
to kind of test and debug our app. And this will point to this localhost address right here. Now, keep in mind, just because this is the free version of the software, whenever you rerun this tool, and you do need to keep this running, you can't close this window, you need to keep it running the entire time, this address will change. So what the paid version does for you is it lets you have a permanent address for this so it doesn't constantly change. For us, that doesn't matter. This is just for development purposes anyways. But copy this address. It doesn't really matter if you use the HTTPS or the HTTP. I'll just use the HTTP. Again, this doesn't really matter at all. And we're going to go back to the Slack API website here. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go back to events. So let me find where that is, event subscription. And now we're going to enable events. And where it says request URL, we're going to put that URL that we just copied. We're going to put slash Slack and then slash events. Now, once we do that, uh, we're going to go and go to subscribe to bot events. And we're going to add the events inside of here that we want to subscribe to. So in this case, I'm going to go add bot user event. And what I want to do now is I want to have channels and I want to do message dot channels. What this will do is allow me to be subscribed to all of the events where a user messages something in a specific channel. What will happen when someone sends a message is it will send a request to this URL, which in turn will hit our local server because we've rerouted that using ngrok, and then we'll be able to do something with that. So I'm going to go ahead and press save changes. And now it says you've changed the permission scopes for, for your apps. Please reinstall your app for these changes to take effect. Now it also says right here that we need channels colon history as a required scope for this to work. So remember back in the first video, what we did is we went to OAuth and permissions and what we needed to do is add the channel history scope or we added chat right. Now this automatically added this scope for us because we added that event subscription. But just so you know, say for some reason it didn't add it, it showed you what you need to add. So you could go here and add that and then reinstall the app. But anyways, what we're going to do is press reinstall app. Again, we'll just press allow and we're good to go. And now we can get out of this page. We can go back to our VS code and we can continue to write. All right. So just note if I go here uh, to ngrok, we have a request that's come in here that says post slash slack slash events. What this is saying is that we have just actually received a request because we just put that URL in, right? And it was verifying that URL was correct to this endpoint right here, which is slash slack slash events. Now keep in mind that the reason why, if I go back to the API page, I just want to make sure this is really clear. Let's go back to event subscription. The reason why I added the slash slack slash events here is because this address right here points to our local host. And what I did inside of the code here is I said, okay, I want all of the events to be sent to this endpoint. So that's why I added that there. Now, if I had changed this to like events one, I would have to go back here and change ngrok to slash slack slash events one, right? I would add a one at the end there. Anyways, we don't need that, uh, but let's go back to that. All right, so now that we have that, what we need to do is create a route or create a function that can actually handle all of these events. So I'm going to say at slack event adapter, uh, and sorry, not that, we're going to do the one at slack underscore event adapter. So the variable we set up here, and we're going to say dot on. And then inside of here, we're going to say message. Now, this is simply what we use to handle the on message event. So when a message is sent, we're going to handle that and we're going to do something inside of here. So I'm going to say define message. I'm going to take a payload here and then inside of here, we'll do a few different things. Now, what this is saying is that when a message is sent, we're going to call this function and we're going to take the payload that was sent to us. The payload is just some data that the Slack API is going to send. In this case, it's going to send us all of the data about the specific message that was sent. So what I'm going to do is say event equals payload dot get. And then inside of here, I'm going to say event comma and then just an empty dictionary like that. What this is saying is let's look for the key event inside of our payload. If we don't have that, we'll return a blank dictionary. The event key is going to give us information again about what that event was and like the message that was sent, all of the text and all of that. Now, the first thing that we can do is we can see what channel this message was sent in. So I can say channel ID is equal to event dot get. And then instead of here, I can say channel. What this will do is give me the channel ID uh, that whatever message was sent in, right? So pretty straightforward. Next, I can say user ID. So user ID equals event.get. And then in this case, I can say user. 
pretty straightforward. It's going to give me the ID of the user that sent this message. And again, we're getting that from the event key in the payload. Next, what I'm going to do is say text equals event dot get. Take a wild guess at what this is going to be. It is simply text. And there we go. So what I'm going to do now is simply echo back to the user whatever they send us. So we'll use this client dot uh, dot chat underscore post message. So we'll go ahead and put that like that. And what we will do is we'll say, OK, when you post a message, uh, sorry, <laughs> when we receive a message, we will simply send back whatever that message was. So I will change the text here to be text, which means whatever was sent to us, we will send back. And then the channel, I will simply change to be the channel ID. So I'll say channel equals channel ID. And now whenever a message is sent, we will send back another message that simply echoes it. So let's save that. I might have made a mistake here, but let's run this code. OK, so we're running the server. Have a look at ngrok. Oops, I want to close that. I keep opening that wrong one. Uh, and you'll see all of the events that are coming in. But let's go back to Slack. In this case, we're going to go actually back to our Slack channel. And now I'm going to send something. I'm going to send hi. And notice that the YouTube bot keeps returning hi. Now we kind of have a problem here, right? It's just constantly sending back hi. And if I go to ngrok here, you can see that we just keep getting all these requests coming in and it just keeps telling us that messages were sent. Now, the reason why we continue to send hi is because if we have a look at our code here, all we've actually done is just handled the situation where a message was sent, right? If any message was sent, it doesn't matter by who, even our own bot, then we're going to send a message back. So what we need to do is we need to make sure that when we send a message, we're only sending it if the previous message was not from us, right? So we don't want to reply to a message that was ourselves. So what we're going to do is check to see if the message event that we're getting sent here is from a bot or if it's from ourself. Now to do this, what we need to do, and actually let me just stop this server for a second because it's just going to keep going. So let's just do control C and I'll stop that there. We need to check if the user ID of this message is equal to our bot's ID. But that means we need to know our bot's ID. So the first thing we're going to do is say bot underscore ID. And we're going to do this above the function is equal to client dot API call. Now, this is another way that we can call specific endpoints on the Slack API. If you know about that, then this will be useful. If not, don't worry about it. No problem. But we're going to say client dot API underscore call. And we're going to say auth dot test. Now, what this is going to do is return to us again some information. One of those pieces of information will be the ID of our bot. So to get that, we're going to say user underscore ID. Now, don't worry if this is confusing you. Just imagine that all this line is doing is giving us the ID of our bot. So we can simply check if the user ID here is equal to the ID of our bot. If it is, we're just not going to send the message. So we'll say if the bot underscore ID does not equal the user ID, then we'll go ahead and send that message. So let's save that. Let's run the server. And I need a colon here. That's going to be a syntax error. Let's add the colon. Expected an indented block. That should be indented as well. My apologies. But let's run that now. We can see this is all running. Let's go back to Slack and let's send hello world. Give it a second and notice that our bot returns hello world, but it doesn't just keep sending hello world. Now let's say hi. I am Tim and we get hi, I am Tim. So that is the basics and that is how we subscribe to events. Now, of course, there is all kinds of other events as well. If you have a look here of subscribe to bot events, you can kind of scroll through and just pick whatever events you want. It will add automatically add that scope. And then all you'll need to do is maybe just do a quick lookup to figure out how or what the string is here that you need to pass in to handle that specific event. But if you want another event, you would just write the exact same thing I've done here. The payload may be slightly different that's coming in, but you can get the same information like the channel, the user, the text. You can get the time. There's a bunch of other stuff that you can get. In fact, to conclude here, I will just print out what the payload looks like so you guys can have an idea of what we're actually being returned here. So let's say print payload like that. Let's go into our console. Let's go to Slack and let's send a message. Hello world. And you can see that if we have a look here, we get the payload, right? So we have all this stuff coming in. So this is all the information that it's passing us. Now you can kind of parse through this information on your own and get all of the stuff that you want, but you can just print it out and kind of have a look at, you know, 
what you're actually getting back from the API. So anyways, I think I'm going to end the video here. Hopefully that showed you how we can handle messages and gave you kind of some intuition on how you would handle other events. In the future, we will handle some other events, but I'm gonna be trying to show you a bunch of different things just so you're aware of what's possible and you can kind of make your bot your own. I'm not gonna be trying to make this like a full-fledged bot that has some specific purpose. So anyways, as always, I hope you guys enjoyed. If you did, please like, subscribe, and I will see you again in the next Slack bot tutorial.